Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you the narrow hemmer foot. So this is the foot and you've probably got this in your stash of sewing machine attachments and maybe you've had a try of it or maybe you've never gone anywhere near it thinking what does this do. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way of using it and and actually what it can be useful for. So you can pause this video and go and get your adjustable hemmer and cut yourself a piece of fabric or a couple of pieces of fabric that are eight inches long and one and a half inches wide. So this is what I've cut ready. I've just used some calico, but you can use any fabric that you like, but it's just to have a muck about with. But I'll show you some other things that you can use as well. So this is the adjustable, not adjustable, this is the narrow hemmer foot. So this is for a low shank machine. Okay, it has a little groove here and that's where your thread and also your needle goes through. Now some adjustable hemmers that will come with your vintage machine they may have been damaged at some point. So I'm gonna take you through how to recognize whether one is damaged. So the first thing, let me just get my little pointer, which I can't find, so I'm gonna just use a pen instead. So the first thing you'll notice is you've got a groove here Okay, and then you've got this piece of metal that curls, starts to curl, and if I hold it at this angle, it starts to curl down into the foot. Now, if I hold it at this angle, you can see it kind of ridges up and then curls down. And then you've got this kind of indent here. If I turn it upside down, so now we're looking underneath, that piece of metal curls to a point. Normally, um, from what I've seen, some are narrow hemmers have lost this point. If it's lost this point, it's not gonna work. It will also have, you can see a curl in the metal here. Again, sometimes these are snapped off or they've been pulled out of position thinking that um, something was wrong with it. Um, so if, if you haven't got a point here and you haven't got a curled bit here, then you've got a damaged, just the uh, dam I keep saying adjustable, a damaged narrow hemmer. These are really easy to get hold of because people don't use them. They don't know what they're for. So you will find on lots of selling sites, people getting rid of these. Um, so grab yourself one. They're, I believe they're very, very cheap. Um, but the things to look out for is this point and the way this curls here. Okay, if I try and get it at an angle, you can see there's a the, the metal. It, let me try and get this at an angle. The metal you can see is creating a curl. And that's the most important thing. Now, what an adjustable hemmer does. Oh, I'm so sorry. Narrow hemmer. Right, narrow hammer. What it does is it folds a piece of fabric over once by a quarter of an inch and then it rolls it again to create a very nice rolled hem. Okay? When you open it up, but if, if, so think about it's going to create a quarter fold and then another quarter of an inch fold. That's what you're left with. And then what it also does at the same time is does, oh, sorry, get into focus, it does a stitch. Now, if I put this under my machine ready, it does take practice, but let me just get my thread set up ready. I'm using red thread and I'm just using some calico just to show you how this works. 
So the idea is to send that fabric through so that it starts to curl. But obviously it can get caught and that's why people get frustrated. So a good idea is actually just to snip the corner. So that's what I'm gonna do. So you know that it's gonna come in a quarter and then a quarter. Um, I have measured it as well. I think uh, some narrow hemmers roll just ever so slightly different. So what I do is I kind of go by, I, I change from inches to metric and I go with a centimeter. So I cut a corner off, which would be around a centimeter square. I'm cutting on the diagonal. This just helps to get you started. And actually what I'm gonna do, if you've cut yourself a piece of fabric that's one and a half inches wide and eight inches long. I'm, I'm not actually measuring it, so you can see my, my snips are a bit off, but this is just to demonstrate um, how it's going to look and what you can make from it. So I've snipped off two corners at that end, and if I flip it round, I've snipped off just two corners of that end. Yes, I know that the corners aren't quite right, but it doesn't matter. What this does is enables me to hold with this hand and use my finger to just bring up the curl. And then with a bit of, I'm using my fingers here and I'm just pushing just enough. And you can just about see the fabric just here. Then I'm going to drop my presser foot. Then we can start to sew. Now, the technique I found works for me is with my left hand and my first finger, I put my finger down to the bed of the machine and then use my thumb to hold it in place. And what that's doing is it's created the fabric to curl over. Now, when I'm sewing, I'm not gonna look at my needle at all, but I'm gonna be looking at this edge here, and I'll adjust my finger and my thumb just to ensure that I'm not curling too much fabric over. But I found this is a good angle, just putting my first finger down um, so that the nail is touching the bed, and then just use like that. And I'm using my thumb to just hold in place. So I'm doing this on a 99 hand crank and it will start to feed and you can see I'm just adjusting it ever so slightly with my finger. Now you can stop because my fabric, see it started to buckle so I'm just going to help with it curling. You'll find your own um, position with your finger and thumb. But what I'm paying the most attention to is that the fabric curls over enough to this point only. It's not coming over, <coughs> excuse me. It's not coming way over here. It's just straight up to this point. And I'm gonna start running out of fabric in a moment. So you can see I'm up to the edge now, so I'm just gonna hold it with my finger just here, just to make sure. So I'm, I'm kind of half pushing a little bit. And then I'm just gonna let it run off. I'm lifting the presser foot, just gonna snip. And that has created a rolled hem. Okay, nice and neat, nice and very pretty and lovely. Ooh, what is that? Old thread. Okay, nice and neat. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. You can see I've, I've cut more of a snip, more of a triangle on that side, but that doesn't matter because I'll show you what I'll do next. So same thing again, I'm gonna push that on, push with this hand and I'm just gonna curl it over enough just so I can see the fabric where the needle is, put my foot down. Same thing again, 
nail. I'm kind of, my nail kind of go is in line with this side. And then I'm just grabbing with my thumb and I can kind of angle it so I know where that is. At the moment, the fabric is curled slightly over a bit more, but once it takes under the needle, I can just tiny little adjustments with my thumb and my finger. And then that's working quite nicely. If you find it starting to unravel, just hold it more at this angle just to catch it back and curl again. And then you can straighten your finger and thumb out. I'm getting towards the end. So now I'm gonna just let go and I'm gonna hold the fabric there. Now I'm using, because I'm using calico, it's quite stiff, so it's gonna, it's gonna work with me. So if I pull away, it's gonna uncurl. If I push it towards me, it will curl. You might find if you're using a thinner fabric that you'll have to just keep your thumb and finger together. And that creates the rolled hem on the other side. So I've created a little strip, essentially. That is the principle of a narrow hemmer. Let me just put my thread back. It takes practice, so it's a good idea to just start with some narrow strips of uh, scrap fabric just to get you practicing. I've found that by having my finger nail my nail pressing um, on the bed and then my thumb next to it. Obviously when the fabrics are even like sending through, I'm not putting any pressure on my finger so the fabric is sliding underneath. But this angle for me is perfect. Obviously if you use an electric machine, you have got your right hand free. So you might find it easier. Um, you might You might kind of develop a slightly different technique. Because I'm hand cranking my right hand, I can't use my right hand at all. So I've had to learn how to just use my left hand. So for me, having my fingernail down and then using my thumb to guide the fabric, just it works. It works for me. Um, <clears throat> but practice with some just some little strips just to get you started. And say this snipping off the edge works well, but um, I'm going to show you something now where it. it doesn't necessarily need snipping it just you've got to kind of feel your way a bit so I'm gonna start I'm gonna show you now so I've just got a piece of just old fabric it's calico again but what I've done is I've angled the corner round because the narrow hemmer can go round corners it can uh, especially if you're doing for example a neckline fabric um, um, neckline garment which is going to have a curve. So I've done the same thing again. I've just snipped off the edge and we're just going to get that loaded ready into the feed it under. Drop my presser foot. So I'm going to do the same thing again with my finger and my thumb but I know I should have ironed the fabric but never mind. But I know that it's I'm going to be reaching a curve. So let's just get it started because I know I'm on the straight. Now, my thumb is already getting to the start of the corner. So I'm having to stop because I want to make sure if I'm just holding it straight, I'm going to run off the corner. So I need to start to increase the, what I'm grabbing. So I'm just going to move down a little bit and grab the start of the bend. But I'm still paying attention to what's feeding through. Same. So... I need to move down a bit. I'm going to slightly angle the fabric. Essentially, you want to make sure that what your finger and your thumb are holding up is what feeds into the hemmer, which means you can see I'm starting to kind of feed my way down a little bit. And I'm going to need to grab it a little bit more. It's okay to stop and start. Um, once you practice with that, you, you might be able to do the whole thing in one 
hit. Didn't quite catch at the end there. But so that's now done. A it's a little bit chunky there. But you can see that that's done a rolled hem and then it's begun onto a cap. If I fold it this way. Oh, what's this fluff? If I let me put it under the machine so you can see there from that angle. So you can see that rolled hem has gone round the curve and then onto a straight section. It's a little bit wonky, um, but it's it's just something to to practice. So off camera. I thought, well, okay, if I, if I can do a rolled hem on a curve, can I do it in a complete circle? Now, I did stretch the fabric a little bit, but if I just send that under so that you can, hopefully on the camera, if not, I'll move. No, it's not working. So let me, oh, I'm a stupid head now. That's better. Let me just step back a bit. So you can see I, I've done a rolled hem completely in a circle. Um, that's actually where I start and finish, so that's not perfect. And unfortunately, it's created a little bit of a buckle. Uh, but I'm hoping once I put that under the iron, that will completely press that flat. But at the moment, yeah, you can, if I'm at this angle, you can see there's some slight kinks going on. And if I turn it upside down, this is an example where I rolled too much under. This is my first practice go. But that's quite neat going round. That's a bit meh. That's also a little bit meh, but that's okay. That's the underside. Um, so there you go. I've, I've created a rolled hem coaster or something. I, I've created a thing. And then this is a curved thing. So that, that's basic. So let me go back to here. Okay, and that's just doing a rolled hem on a straight straight stitch on a, on a straight piece of fabric. Yep, nice and nice and lovely. But what is the point? Why use this? Yes, they are beautiful if you can do a rolled hem, say for example, on a skirt or very very thin fabric or very delicate fabric they're you know once you, once you master this they they can do beautiful delicate little hems on on thin sleeves or as I say or skirts or um at tops i haven't done any garment sewing but what i was making recently was let me turn the camera up i was making some storage pods and oh, mine's got a dent in it. Put that out. So I made some storage pods. Let me turn that back around. And then what I did was a little tab at the top with a cam snap. And all that is is a little rolled hem. So I can put that back. So they make little little tags. So if I turn this one over, you can create nice little hook tabs for things or on key rings, that kind of thing. Um, one of the things I was just working on just to see, you know, to do something interesting. There's no point having these attachments if we're not going to use them or use them for, for more modern things or, you know, just something different. So what I did, I used some black fabric and I just trimmed off the messy edges. So I'm just gonna just match up what I've done previously with this one. So that what I wanna do is just make sure they're the same. Oops, sorry, make sure that they're the same size as the black one that I've done. So that's just neatened up for my strip now. And the reason I've done that is because you can actually create 
little chain links with them. So I've just used some black cotton and some calico, but you, you can use any fabric you want, but that can create some nice chain link decorations or an alternative to bunting in, in the garden. So if I just hook that one over, let me turn it so that it's right sides together. And then stitch across. I was just stitching a quarter of an inch. So let me do that. Take this foot off. The clearance um, for my attachment on the 99K, well, I say clearance, there isn't actually much clearance at all. So I'm just gonna go back to my, my normal quarter of an inch foot. So I'm gonna put my new little thingy right sides together and I'm just going to create just a quarter of an inch seam I suppose you could do less than that let's do a quarter of an inch so there's that I'm going to fold it in on itself now you could if you wanted to press those seams to one side and top stitch just to lock that in but um, the lock stitch on the vintage machines are so strong anyway I mean I, you, I didn't even reverse stitch on that because that's a really strong seam but you might want to just press that down I'm going to just use it use my fingers just to press that down and then you're making a very simple Paper chain, fabric chain, not paper chain. And so, so I mean, I'm sure there are lots and lots of uses for this little fella. Um, these are just some of the things I've started to put together. I think something like paper chain or fabric chains are quite funky. And it, um, if you made this out of Christmas fabric, um, you know, that you're creating reusable Christmas decorations for example or that's it they can just be hung in the garden hung in trees they're a nice little alternative to paper or plastic and you're using up scraps and all you've done is just used this little fella here to create something quite nice and funky so I hope that helps if, if you have um, any suggestions or anything that you've done with an adjustable oh my god stop saying adjustable hammer stupid narrow hammer if you've got any suggestions on what you use with a narrow hammer it'd be really good to 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 know if you want to leave a comment uh, if you've found your own technique for sliding that fabric under uh, I have you know please let me know in the comments I have tried, let me just get a bit of scrap. I have tried to do it without putting it on the foot so that I can at least get that. Actually, no, that's the wrong way. And it's the wrong bit of fabric. Let's try a piece of this to see whether it, it actually works if I slide it under first before adding it to the foot. But the problem is it's so thin and delicate and it, it the risk of this fabric just kind of unhooking itself um it's actually i found it easier to put it on the machine and then manipulate that fabric in but um there's no i don't think there is any right or wrong way it's just what works for you and and this is what works for me okay i hope you enjoyed the video